Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, another huge week with Consensus Week, a sea of green led by Bitcoin with altcoins then catching up. One of the biggest movers this week was NEM. We're going to talk about why that is as well. Now, in Australian politics, we did have the election yesterday, but we did lose an Australian legend, a real character, never took himself too seriously, good sense of humor, and I wish we had other politicians um, as good as Bob. On this day in crypto history, well, it's been a year since Jack Dorsey first started really embracing Bitcoin, saying that he saw it as the web's native currency, that WannaCry virus back in 2017, New York Stock Exchange launching their price index, BitPay, which a lot of you know and have used, raising $30 million, which was a record at the time, and Mt. Gox having their assets seized back in 2013. So into the Australian news, and it was a shock win by the Liberals. He believes in miracles, uh, says Scott Morrison. So let me know what you guys think of that outcome below. We obviously talk about this sort of stuff a lot on the channel while trying to remain uh, politically neutral. But unemployment is rising. And I spoke about this with Martin a few weeks ago that I thought this was the bottom and that things were going to trend higher. We've got some tough times ahead. I did do our housing and economic update. So I won't spoil that if you guys want to check that one out that we uploaded a few days ago. Over to the UK now, where again, we're seeing these facial recognition systems. So it's in Australia, it's in China, and a pedestrian has been fined for covering up his face. So are we heading into that George Orwell 1984? Is this going too far? Let me know what you guys think of that one in the comments below. But the big news for world stock markets uh, was tariffs this week. So Canada ending their standoff with the US over metals tariffs, but China and the US not being able to come to a deal. So we saw that Canada dumped a lot of their treasuries on this news and China's also selling. Now this is affecting their foreign exchange reserves. This is one of the things that countries have to use to sort of peg their currency. And this is why China is starting to have a tough time. So this is very complicated, a number of reasons, but they've really tried to defend uh, that seven number. And when they're running out of treasuries to sell, they can't just keep printing their own money. Their their currency is going to weaken. So again, this is all that, um, you know, it reminds me of Game of Thrones in a lot of ways. Everyone printing up their own currency. Who knows what the other one is is really worth? What are they backed by? Uh, And you guys know that's why we love uh, gold and Bitcoin. So China have been pumping a lot of capital into the markets, their version of QE. And Chinese stock buybacks have soared. But at the same time, we see foreigners pulling their money out of China, that money that's sloshing around it wants to find a home. And when there was a lot of money being printed, you know, take advantage of that, stocks go up. But now it looks like foreigners are starting to place their bets elsewhere. And at the moment, the US still has one of the strongest stock markets relatively, even though it's overvalued and whatnot, a lot of other world markets are really struggling. Now, in terms of other currencies, the Turkish lira tumbled. One by one, it's these sort of mid-tier. You know, let's not worry about what the US and Europe are doing. It's these mid-tier economies and countries that are having real issues with their currency that are more likely to see benefit and a store of value from Bitcoin. Now, every week we talk about these money laundering charges, and sure enough, again, Wells Fargo uh, pleading guilty to laundering millions of money, millions of dollars here, but it was over to the EU where five banks and 1.2 billion in foreign exchange uh, cartel. So we know they've been done rigging metals markets, foreign exchange, laundering money. Um, it really is just crazy to see how they badmouth Bitcoin when they are doing that uh, every week. Now, over to uranium, and a lot of you have been interested in this commodity. Always do your own research, but there is a new uranium ETF out with the ticker Hoorah. That is trading uh, over in Toronto on the Toronto Stock Exchange for those of you with global share accounts. Um, I've done my ultimate guide to uranium investing if you want to check that one out. And we see a lot of other funds um, starting to get involved in this space. So uranium is one that I'm still bullish on longer term. Back to the US and we see auto loan delinquencies spike to Q3 2009. So that was during the GFC and this is despite strong labor markets. So Martin North and I spoke about how unemployment is measured um, and you know they're always telling us that record lows, the labor market's strong, but all these other metrics that people are under pressure and in debt, um, 90 day delinquencies back up to 4.5% there in the US. 
Now, this is a this is such a shocking statistic. I don't know why this hasn't been more widely spoken about. Global trade year on year has fallen off a cliff, not as sharply seen as since the GFC. So we know that world economies are slowing. Central banks and governments are telling us that everything's great. Um, very very interesting times ahead. What are they going to do? And watch what they uh, watch what they do, not what they say. So central banks are buying up gold now particularly China and Russia, those currencies that are diminishing their uh, US Treasury reserves as I just spoke about before. But I think gold is going to have a renewed interest. It has lost some of its luster to Bitcoin, I I will admit. But I think at the end of the day, when sovereign wealth funds with billions or trillions of dollars need to park money in a safe place if things get nasty, they can do that with gold and all the ETFs. They can't quite do that with Bitcoin there. So that's where I think gold is going to have its day. And in Aussie dollar terms, gold is already breaking out to new highs because of the weakness in our local currency. This was a fantastic chat. I love Steve Keen. We talked about all these topics here, guys. Please check that one out. I think you're going to absolutely love clueless central banks and how all economies are turning Japanese. One of the US presidential candidates who's maybe going to shake things up in 2020 did say this week that he wants to have fun with crypto while in the White House. So we know that there's been some surprises, whether it was Brexit or Trump, or even the Liberals were the underdogs in Australia yesterday. Let's see if someone that's uh, bullish on crypto can get enough of the vote. But I'm not in the US, and let me know, um, our US followers, if you think this guy is a chance at all. Now, a lot of people are saying that the bull run is back, and one of those signs each time is scammers. And I could not believe this, guys. Head over to bitconnect.io if you don't believe it, and apparently they're relaunching in 40 days. Now, I spent a lot of emotional capital telling people to avoid Bitconnect and USI Tech, and people people will have their mind up. So say who you can, friends and family, but some people just won't listen to you no matter what. Another exchange that we, you know, it's too late to avoid now, but these smaller tier exchanges, you have to be so careful. If there's a coin that's only on a really small exchange, Buy it and then get it off, guys. It's just happened so many times over the years. Really unfortunate situation here where it looks like um, crypto holders aren't really going to get their crypto back. Maybe they'll get a little bit. These liquidations um, can take years, as we've seen with Mt. Gox. But uh, I'm sorry to anyone that lost crypto on Cryptopia. Another exchange that's been in the news a lot is uh, Bitfinex. And their IEO, the LEO token, raised a billion dollars in a week. Now, that is crazy. That tells me that there's plenty of investors out there that are still bullish on Bitfinex, despite a lot of the stuff we read in the news. Look, a lot of these news websites do have ulterior motives. I will say that, but we know Tether and Bitfinex have been far from perfect. This token is going to have a a lot of utility, just like Binance token does. But if you read down here on page nine, they're planning on launching derivatives, so 100 times leverage, um, uh, STO exchange, a marketplace, and a betting agency. So look, I think that's probably one that I'm not buying personally, but uh, I certainly can see that having utility and they've raised that capital pretty quickly. So investors with deep pockets are confident. Another exchange that is spreading its wings is um, Coinbase and they are competing with Binance. So we've seen Binance roll out to different countries. Coinbase Earn is now available in over 100 countries. And Brian Armstrong has spoken about how he wants you know, even the bottom 1 billion people by wealth to be able to earn cryptocurrency to start their journey. So uh, that is great to see. Now, Facebook have registered their project Libra over in Switzerland. I've got a huge interview coming up this week um, with someone that's very high up in loyalty, marketing, and social media. And we talk about what Facebook are planning to do. Is it going to compete with Bitcoin? All that sort of thing. So don't miss that interview this week. Amazon have filed a patent for a proof of work cryptographic system. So this uses Merkle trees. It's a little bit different to um, how Bitcoin uses proof of work. But uh, all these patents in a decentralized world, at some at some point we're going to get an overlap with someone that's patented something, whereas an open source project is is already using it. Um, and that's you know what Craig Wright talks about coming after everyone with all these patents. But uh, I certainly find it funny that there's a, a rush for patents in this world. That's aiming to be decentralized and open source. The top banks are getting together, investing $50 million to build a blockchain settlement system. So we see that in Australia starting to go live. Um, 
banks really um, come into the realization that clearing and settlement is one of the best use cases for blockchain. We saw the World Bank and ComBank in Australia here team up um, to launch some bonds on the blockchain as well. So starting to be used, gradually getting more mainstream. Uh, we've seen you know Microsoft and others, Ernst & Young, using the public Ethereum chain. And uh, we'll get to the Microsoft news about using Bitcoin as well this week. So that's the battle between public and private chains. Now, crypto.com has launched and you can earn and credit to replace your bank account. So there's so many options. I think I've covered Arbra, um, DXDY, um, sorry, DX Exchange, crypto.com now, 8%. It's far more attractive than any savings account you're going to get in any uh, G20 country. Uh, newer and wire another one where you can earn interest so more and more people are going to start to use this instead of a bank account and just park their money in stable coins that they don't want the volatility of their other crypto in as well so Stellar had a two hour outage this week and you know this is the trade off with the projects that are more centralized and as soon as i say that word you know people pipe up and go it's not centralized but guys it's all a scale this is one of the more centralized projects and that's great for some use cases they're not trying to be as decentralized as bitcoin but we have to realize that this is what is possible and with these other you know change with 20 or 50 nodes whatever it is you know how many of these does it take before projects say you know what i can't have this downtime and they move to a more decentralized project so look stella is a project that i actually do like i'd love to get uh jed McCabe on the channel but uh two hour outage is uh not great for anyone now nem has been one of the worst performers it is actually one that i own because i was so supportive of catapult their layer two upgrade that was meant to be coming two years ago and they were ahead of ethereum at the time so as i always say these things take time far harder than they first thought they are eventually rolling out a uh, catapult and it sent the price of nam up 55 uh, percent this week so look they're getting into mosaics security tokens all sorts of things so again it's about the partnerships and who's actually going to use their platform now and can they get uh, big traction throughout japan and other parts of asia which is their goal now, Kenya Coin has moved to Binance Chain. So it's very interesting to see who's going to make the move away from Ethereum. And these guys have been pretty big supporters of Ethereum over the years. So Kenya did have a jump in price. They're actually one of the coins that's been very busy building in crypto winter. Um, I caught up with them again recently. It's one that I own because I'm so passionate about uh, the peer-to-peer -peer task force and you know, replacing that um, workplace in a decentralized fashion, peer-to-peer. -peer. So look, let's see what comes of this. Now, Binance Chain doesn't have all the smart contract features of Ethereum, but uh, we are seeing uh, projects that just want that uh, payment settlement move over to Binance. Now, Charles Hoskinson has teamed up with Polymath to launch their own blockchain. So this is going to be called uh, Polymesh. I need to read more about this, but this is so interesting to me because Ethereum has all these standards that are coming out um, and they were becoming the standard for STOs. Now, I interviewed another project, which will, that interview will be up in a couple of weeks. I've added another STO to my portfolio. Um, I have let members know what that is. They've got a big announcement coming up in three days' time. Uh, but look, these projects announcing that they do need their own blockchain has made some other projects look really good that went down that path earlier on. So again, Cardano are taking on a lot. Um, look, ADA is one I own. Uh, slow progress. You can't do everything. So good things take time. Now, the Microsoft news I touched on just before, choosing the Bitcoin blockchain for their decentralized identity tool. And I really think that the most value of all these public chains is the open source nature. Just with the internet, more coins are piggybacking off Bitcoin using its proof of work security. Um, and obviously Ethereum is that other option if you need more functionality at this stage as well. So big names, guys, so much came out of consensus week. We had a huge run in price, but we will talk about that in just a second. The world's fifth largest electrical company now using an Ethereum DAP as well. So iExec is one I've covered on the channel uh, in the decentralized computing space. Really fantastic project. And uh, Powerledger is the other one that comes to mind when we talk about these electrical companies. And Powerledger is one that I'm still bullish on. I know they've had a tough run, but I believe that they're going to do good things in the next 12 months. 
Now, Bact was just another piece of news set to roll out in July 2019. I'm not going to talk about that one too much. I've spoken about my thoughts on futures and ETFs to death. And it was interesting that Jake Shavinsky came out this week and saying that the SEC have uh, delayed the Bitwise ETF but not made a decision on the big Van Eck one that we're all waiting on. Now, that's a little bit unusual. Why wouldn't they just delay them all as they have in, a, in the past? So Tuesday is that deadline. Not getting too excited, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit curious why they haven't delayed that one. So look, if that comes out of the blue, um, certainly I would see the market going higher, but uh, unlikely. If we head over to uh, bitinfo.charts, we can see the on-chain transactions and Bitcoin has picked up uh, pretty nicely and it's ticking along. But Ethereum is the one that's really started to accelerate away here. So in over 900,000 uh, transactions every day, that's awesome to see. I, I know they're not scaling yet, guys, but they're, they're holding up pretty well. And it's going to be interesting to see what Bitcoin does. You know, this talk of Segwit2x has come out of nowhere again this week. Uh, but the Bitcoin fees have crept up a little bit with all this price action. Um, we know that liquid sidechain is freeing up transactions for the exchanges, but uh, we want to keep an eye on those fees. Um, keep them low. Make sure you check the fees that you are sending when you use your wallet. We also know that uh, these metrics of Google searches are a great indicator and Bitcoin this week at one point surpassed the searches uh, for Trump as well as Tesla. So we know that retail FOMO and searches begin pretty quickly as soon as price goes up. This is one of about 10 indicators I use um, to gauge sentiment and I do let you guys know in the group from time to time, exchange volumes, exchange sign-ons. Um, social media activity and engagement, and it's all been ticking up. It's a long way to go to get to the highs of the previous bull market, though. And if you do have those friends and family asking, please show them this video, guys. Is now a good time to buy Bitcoin? And my four-year cycle video I did, so many people just absolutely FOMO in, and uh, I got some great feedback that uh, this five minutes helped someone learn 12 months um, worth of stuff. So thank you for that feedback. It's always great to hear. In terms of trading this week, we did have a fantastic trade and I've been talking about the longs and the shorts and when you know they were at these extremes, I said a move to the upside would see us actually slice through these levels like butter because all these shorts are going to burn. Now, at, during this week, these fell off a cliff and the longs actually shot up and I said that, hey, this to me is a signal that this move is running out of steam. Um, I want to be a contrarian and I entered a short on Bitcoin at 8233. Now that played out extremely well. It dropped over $1,000, nearly $1,500 on some exchanges that day. So I know plenty of you followed that trade. Look, I don't like to give trade calls. I always like to base it on fundamentals and reasoning. But if you took that trade with any sort of leverage, that is your month. That is almost your year if you're on 100 times leverage, as I know a few of you do like. So um, it's great to see. In terms of what we were looking at market-wise this week, we were looking for a push up on the 13th of May, and we certainly got that huge push up. Uh, we did run out of steam there once I spoke about those longs and shorts, but if you're waiting for that pullback, it was into these moving averages, and we saw buyers come in. So there's a lot of volume here, a lot of sell volume, but we have to keep in mind that this is red, but that was consisting of a lot of buyers stepping in there. We then had this uh, engulfing candle really take off. So we're only six hours into this daily candle. If we can get this volume to pick up, um, that's what we want because at the moment, there's not a lot of volume coming in here. Let's put that back on auto. As you can see on the sell-off here, yes, there were some buyers. We've got a bit of a Bart Simpson. Uh, we want to hold this now and then have another leg up on pretty big volume like we were seeing back here. That's the sort of volume... Uh, I do want to see. Now, if you were trading this one as well, as soon as you lose the moving averages on that four-hour time frame and that daily time frame, that is where you could have entered your short. And now we want to wait for them to catch back up again and see if they act as support. So we'll just zoom out and have a look at the weekly. It's all really strong, guys. Look how much that volume is increasing. That gives us the statistic um, likelihood that if we pull back, it's not going to give back all of this move, particularly if the selling volume is lighter 
than the buying volume. So a lot of good signs there. Um, Ethereum and altcoins played catch up this week. So they took off you know, a day or two after Bitcoin. And that's where I posted about the money going into the large cap alts. And if you look down this list at the time, you know, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, Ripple took off, Bitcoin Cash, Mesa Go, IOTA, all these large caps, EOS, they're up 10, 20%. So plenty of good trades to be had there. It's good to see money going into the um, established coins as I've been speaking about. Uh, the final one that I just want to mention is Binance. Now this one has broken out to record highs. We covered our fundamental analysis when it was $4, I believe, and we also put on a trade. So we wrote this one, you know, as, as long as it was riding the averages, we were happy. Plenty of you took this one as well. When you were looking for an entry point, what I said was if we get this overextended on the weekly chart, it's likely to pull back into these averages. And we did get that there. So look, Binance, it's an established player. As long as people are buying crypto, there's new people getting into this space, they are gonna make money. So watch that moving average. Um, well done to any BNB holders. Um, I just wanna finish on uh, a more serious note. And this week, um, I did lose a great friend. So. We do have over 1,000 people in our Facebook community, but it has become like family. Um, and this gentleman was there since the start. It was a mixture of emotions on the weekend uh, with crypto going up and then getting the news that a friend had uh, taken his own life. So guys, if you are going through tough times, please reach out to myself or friends or family, the support services out there. Um, you know, nobody wants this stuff happening. There's always a good reason to live um, and I just can't uh, thank you guys enough for the um, love and support that came in uh, this week uh, to myself and all the team. So um, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll talk to you again soon.